Hello, everyone, and welcome back. Now the goal is to find a way to compute where a function is increasing or decreasing and to compute where a function has local minimums and local maximums. And to do that, I'm going to use the next example or the next remark to really seed the theory behind the method. So here we have a function, okay, in blue. And we're going to do everything that we know on this function. We're going to find local min, local max, global min, global max, where the function is increasing, where is the function decreasing. We're also going to add where the function has critical points and where the slope of the tangent line are positive and negative. And we're going to make some connections. So first, uh, when we start at A here, we see that the function is a local Minimum, I'm just going to write min, okay, for local, just to simplify things. So I have a local minimum at the beginning. Then the function is increasing. So the function is increasing. So I'm going to draw over the graph where the function is increasing in green. So the function is increasing from A to the point C2 and then at C2. What's up at C2? Well, we have a local maximum. So as C2, we have a local maximum. I'm just going to write max here. And then the function is uh, decreasing. So I'm going to uh, uh, draw those um, part that are decreasing in or highlight them in orange. So the function is decreasing between C2 and C3. And it's going to reach a local minimum again. And then the function is increasing from C3 to C4, where it's going to reach a local maximum. Then the function is going to decrease from C4 to the N, so to B. So we have where B is a local minimum. And if we want the... Uh, Absolute min and absolute max, which is a synonym for global. We have an absolute minimum at the beginning. So I'm just going to add up where the absolute stuff is. And we have an absolute max at C4. All right. So that's what we just learned. Like looking at local min, local max, global min, global max, intervals where functions the function is increasing or decreasing. Now we're going to add up uh, critical points. So critical points are where the slope of the tangent is either zero or where the slope of the tangent does not exist. So if you have corners or point where the function is not continuous. So here uh, we have a critical point at C1. Okay, so we have a critical point here because F prime. So we have a critical point here because F prime is equal to zero. We have a, we have a, a horizontal uh, tangent. And then we have another critical point here where F prime is of the form zero. We have another critical point here of the form F prime. Let me just write it carefully. So critical point of the form F prime is equal to zero. So we have a slope that is horizontal. So F prime equal to zero. Then we have a corner where the absolute max is. So this is another critical point. The critical point of the form F prime is undefined. Then we have a critical point at C5 where F prime is equal to zero. So critical point of the form F prime is equal to zero. Um, and why am I obsessed with critical points right now is that you can see that uh, for the points in between A and B, um, those critical points, they cover those local min, local max. Of course, there are some new ones like, like C1 and C5 that are not local min or local max, but um, there's clearly a connection between critical points and local min and local maximum. Now, what about the sign of the derivative? So I can see here between A and B that F prime, if you pick any point and you draw the line of the, you draw the tangent line, so between A and B, I can see that F prime will be strictly positive between C1 and C2, F prime is positive. Between C2 and C3, F prime is negative. So what I mean by this, just to be clear here, for example, pick any point 
between A and C1. If you draw the tangent line, the slope is going to be positive. For example, between C2 and C3, if you pick any point between C2 and C3 and you draw the line, uh, the, the, the line that is tangent at that point, the slope is going to be negative. And then between C3 and C4, F prime is positive. Between C4 and C5, F prime is negative. And between C5 and B, F prime is negative again. So now the crucial moment is that connection. Okay, so you see here that F prime, when F prime is strictly bigger than zero, then the function is increasing. If F prime is strictly less than zero, then it's decreasing for sure. But there are some points where the function is increasing, but F prime is not positive or negative. Like for example, at C1, the function is increasing around C1. Like it, it goes from below, uh, before C1 it's under, after C1 it's over. So the function is increasing from A to C2. But here the idea is that the reason why it's increasing at that point, it's because there's no sign change. Like you go from F prime being positive to positive. But then when you look at C2, where we have a max, where F prime is also zero, the difference here between C1 and C2 is that we have a change of sign. You go from increasing to decreasing. So if you have a change of sign inside the function F prime, then you get a local min or local max. And this works for the for C3, where we have a critical point, F prime is equal to zero, where my derivative goes from negative to positive. So it goes from decreasing to increasing local minimum. C4, F prime goes from positive to negative maximum. Meanwhile, C5 is not a local min or local max because F prime stays negative. So this example is really, really perfect. And the reason why we make this connection between F prime and, and, uh, and where it's increasing or decreasing, it's because now what we understand from that example is that if I have a sign table, not for F, but for F prime, I have a way to compute where the function is increasing or decreasing just by using the sign table. And if you have a critical point where F prime is either positive or, or, or undefined, depending on the behavior of the sign before and after, if it goes from positive to positive, well, it's just increasing right through. If it goes from negative to negative, it's just decreasing right through. But if it goes from positive to negative, a uh, local maximum, from negative to positive, a uh, local minimum. So we have a way now to compute, because of course, if you have the graph in your face, then that's not the same thing as but as computing it. Now, if you have an equation for a function, now we can compute where a function is increasing or decreasing. Let's formalize all this with a bunch of examples. Sorry, not a bunch of examples, but a bunch of definitions. <laughs> Thanks. I mean, sorry. Oh, my God. <laughs> ah. All right, so let's go through theorem and definitions uh, that summarizes... Uh, what we just noticed and remarked uh, with the previous example. So first theorem, if you have a function and a point inside the domain, if the derivative is strictly positive, then the function is increasing at that point. If f prime is strictly negative, then the function is decreasing at that point. So then the question is, what happens if f prime is either zero or undefined for a point inside the domain of your function. Well, we know that when f prime is zero or undefined for a point in the domain of the function, then this is a critical point. And here, a critical point, anything can happen. It could be a point where it's increasing, where it's decreasing, where it reaches a local min. When I say it, I mean the function reaches a local max or a local minimum. So how do we decide? if it reaches a local min or a local max. Well, here we go with the next theorem. So it's called like the classification of critical points using the first derivative. So here, it's also known as the first derivative test okay, to classify critical points. So if you have a point inside the domain that is a critical point, so where f prime is zero or f prime is undefined, if f prime goes from positive to negative around a, then a is a local maximum. If f prime goes from positive and negative to positive around a, then it's a local minimum. If f prime stays positive, so 
from before to after, then the function is increasing at A. And if it stays negative, then it's decreasing at A. So all of this to say, and this is the true power of what we just did a moment ago, for a function f, if you construct the sign table of f prime, automatically you get all the intervals where f is increasing and decreasing, and you get a classification for all the critical points. So all the experiences that we <laughs> that we had together constructing sign tables for function will be really, really useful now, not for f. So you're not constructing a sign table for f, but for f prime. And then you're milking out that sign table to get intervals where it's increasing, intervals where it's decreasing. For, the, classific for the, the critical point, you get a classification of those critical points by looking at what's happening with the sign inside that sign table around those points. So the best way to fully digest this is by looking at examples. All right, now let's do some examples. Let's use sign tables of the first derivatives to find where a function is increasing, decreasing, and let's classify some critical points. So our first function is f of x is equal to x cubed minus 3x squared plus 1. If you compute the, the first derivative using basic rules, you're going to get 3x squared minus 6x. In these questions where you're using the first derivative to compute stuff, like where it's increasing, decreasing, and classifying critical points, you should always simplify it. In this case, you can factor by 3x. So 3x squared minus 6x is the same thing as 3x times x minus 2. Because I want to construct a sign table, the first thing you ask yourself is, when is this function crashing? It's not crashing. When is it equal to 0? Well, it's equal to 0 if the first bit, so if 3x is equal to 0, or if x minus 2 is equal to 0, you get two solutions, either at 0 or at 2. So here we have two um, two points where f prime is zero. So let's construct the sign table. So add zero and add two. The sign of f prime is zero. So it's just like before now, it's just we're doing the sign of that new function f prime. Then you wonder what's up before. So from minus infinity to zero in between. So between zero and two and after between two to infinity. And now you just fill up this sign table. So if you pick a number, less than zero. For example, minus one, three times minus one is negative, and then minus one minus two is negative. So if you multiply two negative number, you're going to get plus. Between zero and two, if we pick one, for example, three times one, that's positive. One minus two is negative. The product will be negative. And afterwards, if you pick a number bigger than two, let's say three, three times three times three minus two, that's going to be positive. So you pick specific values, strictly before zero, strictly between zero and two, and strictly after two. But now, and this is the cool part, we have some visual information. So I have an extra row here, my eye here, okay, my cool eye, okay, my cool red eye. It's like, what's going on visually, okay, on the function f. So for any plus, I will draw an arrow going up. For any negative, I'm going to draw an arrow going down. So the function is increasing from minus infinity to zero because f prime is positive. Because f prime is negative between zero and two, I'm going to draw an arrow that is decreasing, so going down. So my function is decreasing between zero and two. And then from two to infinity, because f prime is positive, the function is increasing. And then what's going on at zero? So here you don't even need to remember the classification theorem. You can see it. My function at zero, I'll be I'll be dealing with a point that is on top of a little mountain. So here zero is an example of a local maximum. I see it, okay, arrow going up and then down at zero, you're on top of a mountain. And then at two, you can see it. Okay, you don't have to remember that stupid theorem. So if you're going down to two and then you're going up again, then two is of course a local minimum. And then now you know everything. You can say that the function is increasing from minus infinity to zero, union two to infinity. It's decreasing between zero and two. I have a local max at zero and a local min at two. So the sign table is so rich in information. That's so exciting. Let's just do another example to, to, to continue this excitement. So if I have my second function is x times e to the power of minus x, so I have a product here. I have to use a product rule 
So I have the product of x and e to the minus x. So if you do the product rule, you're going to get 1 times e to the minus x plus x times e to the minus x times minus 1. I need to use a chain rule here to compute v prime. And again here, you need to be very good with simplification. So now I have two terms. I see an e to the minus x in common that I factor out, leaving behind a 1 and a minus x. And now if I'm trying to find critical points, I want to find where e to the minus x is equal to 0. Of course, e to the minus x is always, always, so any exponential term okay, is always going to be strictly positive. So here, the only way you're going to get a 0 is when 1 minus x is equal to 0, giving you the only critical point, which is 1. So remember, I'll just write this as a recall on the side here, but e to the power of anything will always be strictly positive. So you're never going to get never going to get a zero that way, okay, algebraically. So my sign table only contains one column, one numerical column, one, and the reason why one is there is because it's f prime is zero, and then you wonder what's up before one and what's up after one. So for the interval, minus infinity to one, and then one to infinity. Now, if you plug stuff in, and again, if you're using the same uh, same remark here, because you know the exponential function is strictly positive, the sine of f prime is going to be completely decided by 1 minus x. So if you pick a number before 1, let's say 0, 1 minus 0 is positive. If you pick a number bigger than 1, um, let's say 2, uh, you're going to get 1 minus 2, which is negative. And now visual representation, always start with the intervals, so the function is increasing, uh, between minus infinity to 1, and then it's decreasing between 1 to infinity, which means that at 1, we have a local maximum. I see it. I'm on top of a of a little mountain there. Okay, so, so again here, so that ends up that section. So very, very, like, so the punchline of that section, okay, I, this can be summarized this way. If you want to compute, so to compute, where a function is increasing or decreasing, you first compute f prime, and then you construct the sign table of f prime. Once you have the sign table, you're done, okay? Because the visual representation goes as follow. For any column, for intervals where you have a plus, the function is increasing. If you have a minus, the function is decreasing. And for any numerical column where you have a zero or a not or a, a non-defined, then you will get a classification of that point as being either a local min. If the function is decreasing and then increasing, it's going to be a local max. If it's increasing, then decreasing. And it's just going to be an increasing point if it goes increasing to increasing, or it will be a decreasing point if it goes to decreasing to decreasing. All right, but for that section on the link between f prime and the function f, and where f is increasing, decreasing, and where f has local min, local max, uh, that's it. That's all. You're good to go. Bye-bye, Lou.